Amen. Good evening. So um, today I'll, I'll be going through the final test, which is, which is the image of the beast and the seal of God. Because there is some misconceptions at this time where, where there are some saying that the image of the beast test has already happened, which, which is false because if, if that is supposed to be happening now, there's a number of things supposed to be coming with it as well. And it's just, <clears throat> it's just something that is not substantiated by the Bible and Sister White. So um, this will be a short, a short study just showing what, what the seal is, when, when do you receive the seal, and um, what comes along with the image of the beast. So the first, first thing I'll be reading from is Last Day Events, page 219, paragraph 4. And um, I'll be reading a couple of quotes from Last Day Events, just going from page 219 all the way up to 223.2. And it says, in Last Day Events 219.4, that's where I'm starting, and it says, Just as soon as the people of God are sealed in their foreheads, it is not a seal or a mark that can be seen, but a settling into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so they cannot be moved. Just as soon as God's people are sealed and prepared for the shaking, it will come. Indeed, it has already begun. Excuse me. It, indeed, it has begun already. So what I'm going to show for the first portion is what the seal is. So this is why it says here that is a settling into the truth, both intellectually and spiritually, so they cannot be moved. And that seal is a, is a work that is done by man themselves first. And that work is done from 9-11 to midnight. That work is done under the first and second angel's message. So, it's a settling into the truth, both spiritually and Intellectually, I think that's spelled correctly. Um, but the next seal, the next seal that is placed upon God's people, is a seal that the Lord places, so that <clears throat> all know that all know that they they are the property of God's kingdom. Next, next quote. This is from 7 BC, page 980. It says, The seal of the living God is placed upon those who conscientiously keep the Sabbath of the Lord. So the seal is only placed upon those that keep the Sabbath of the Lord. And it's keeping the Sabbath in its fullness. And we're going get, to get to see that as we move along. From LDE 220.2. LDE 220.2, it says, those who would have the seal of God in their foreheads must keep the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. So there's a seal that is placed upon God's people. And, and that seal, and you get that seal after you, after you show that you are keeping the Sabbath. And it's not, it is not, the, the Lord will bring light upon the Sabbath at midnight. We don't have the fullness of, of, of the light upon the Sabbath. Because we are still doing things that we do, we're still doing things that are against God that we do not know that we're doing. Continuing on, it's from LD, is the next, next paragraph. It says, True observance of the Sabbath is the sign of loyalty to God. So, loyalty, well, I'm not going to write that yet. The true observance of the Sabbath is the sign of loyalty to God. So the Sabbath is a sign, and the Lord marks that out in Exodus, Exodus as well. Next paragraph, last day events 220.4. The fourth commandment alone of all the ten contains the seal of the great lawgiver, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Sister White goes through this whole, this whole portion in last day events, about two or three, three pages, showing that the seal is the Sabbath. Next, next paragraph, 221.1. The seal of the living God will be placed upon those, who on, those only who bear a likeness to Christ in character. So the only, only ones that would have the seal, the seal of God placed upon their foreheads are the ones 
that have a character of Christ. So they have to have divinity and humanity mixed within themselves. And when, when is divinity and humanity placed? It's not during the time period under the first and second angel's message. That does not happen because <clears throat> we're not fully cleansed yet. There's one cleansing here, then there's a second cleansing here. God illustrates that plenty of times. There's, a, there's, first, there's the first cleansing. And midnight is the second. So we're not fully clean until we, until we finish the cleansing. The Lord Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. He begins it one way. He ends it the same way. So we, we have only gone through one cleansing. So then we have to go through a second one until we have fully divinity and humanity, humanity together. Continuing on. Next paragraph. LDE 221.2. Those who receive the seal of the living God and are protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus fully. Continue reading on. This is, actually I'm jumping two pages. This is LDE 223.2. In, in a little while, in a little while, everyone who is a child of God will, will have his seal placed upon him. Oh, that it may be placed upon our foreheads who can who, who can endure who can endure the thought of being passed by when the angel goes forth to seal the servants of God in their foreheads? So the seal is the Sabbath. The seal, the seal is the Sabbath, and the Sabbath is a sign. And that sign is placed upon God's people's forehead. So God, God himself and all of humanity know who God's people are. So the Sabbath is a sign. So this is why it says that you would only receive receive the seal of God, the seal of the living God up, upon your forehead if you only if you have if you have the image of Jesus fully. And Isaiah 8:16 says, "Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples." And Jesus Christ Jesus Christ Jesus Christ says in in the last book in the Bible that those those that overcome the beast and his image are the, are the ones that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. So those those are the ones that show forth <clears throat> Christ Christ fully. So the seal is a seal done by man. There's a seal done. By God, and this seal is placed. The process starts at midnight, and the process is ended at the cross. This is the other seal. <clears throat> now I'm reading from CET, page 189, paragraph 2. CET, 189, paragraph 2. And it says, not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our characters have one spot or a stain upon them. It is left with us to remedy the, the defects in our character, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. So when, <clears throat> when all... When every spot and stain is taken off, off of God's people, that is at midnight, when they receive the Mare vision and they see Christ and they see themselves in contrast to Christ, see their sinfulness, they will humble themselves and then they will repent of their sins. This also brings in, she says here, this is a cleanse, they, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. This also brings in the Day of Atonement. 
throughout the whole year of the daily service, they had to cleanse the temple. And the, this is the daily service. They're cleansing it daily. But Sister White says that there's a special work that must be done on the Day of Atonement to cleanse. So during the yearly service now is another cleansing. And this is when all of the, all of the defects of character and spot and stain upon God's people garments will be put away forever during the yearly service, which is showing during the yearly service which is showing also the sanctuary is also showing the first and second temple cleansing. Go ahead. Um, that word, that in, in that quote that you just read where she says, uh, it is left to us to remedy the defects. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of people who think because it says that, it means we are, we are to remove our sins mm -hmm. from us. But that word remedy has a couple of meanings. And one of the meanings, which in my mind that fits the best, is it says that which counteracts an evil. Amen. To remedy something is to counteract it. So what do we use to counteract evil in our lives? Righteousness. And knowledge of the truth. Amen. Righteousness. <clears throat> not, not you cure. Remedy also means to cure disease. But can we cure sin? No. No, we can't. So by logic, by understanding, the only definition I could use here is that which counteracts an evil. Amen. And we know that good uh, overcomes evil. Amen. Go ahead. And that's why Ellen White called the first angel's message the healing message. Amen. Amen. It's the remedy that God has given us that we have to receive at 9 11. So that that's how we remedy, as Suna was saying, we remedy our defects by receiving the truth. Amen. Um, I'm going to start making a list. Um, I'm not sure if you'll catch it on the camera or anything, but I'll try to make a list down here of things that have to happen before. Things that hap that happens under the third angel's message that is not happening now at 9-11 because the third angel did not come for the priest at 9-11. So, she says, I'm going to read this quote over, starting with the second sentence. It says, it is left with us to remedy the defects in our character in our characters to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. Then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the, upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. So, here... This is where we remedy the defects as well, because you still have a part to play in the Day of Atonement. And the same with Sister White states with Isaiah during his Mara, Mara, Mara experience, Job during his Mara, Mara experience, with Joshua as well, and other, um, other prophets, they had to humble themselves and confess wrongs. And that is what the Day of Atonement teaches as well, that we must confess the wrongs. So there- Is that where the remedy is finished? The remedy begins here, then it's finished, and this is this is the then portion where she says you remedy the defects of in our character, then the latter rain will fall upon us as the early rain. The latter rain will fall after we have done this work of cleansing spot and stain off our garments. Then the fullness of the latter rain will fall upon God's people from the cross over to midnight cry. Okay, cool. All right. Um, and this is when the latter rain will fall in its fullness. The latter rain is not falling in its fullness at 9-11. So with this list, the first one is the latter rain. And the latter rain does not fall in full under the first and second. But before God's people receive this seal, they must go through a test first. Once, once the seal is placed, that is, when, that is when the close of probation is for that class. So this, the, seal upon, the, the seal upon God's people's forehead is placed at point B. But before this, this seal can be placed upon their foreheads, they have to go through a test first. And... I read this quote from Early Writings, page 118, paragraph 1. It says, I then saw the third angel, said my, said my 
accompanying angel. Fearful is his work. Awful is his mission. Is his mission. He is the angel that is to select the wheat from the tares and seal or bind the wheat for the heavenly garner. These things should engross the whole mind, the whole attention. So the third angel is the angel that seals. So the test has to happen under the third angel because you first have to go through the test and then you're sealed. So if the third angel seals, the test has to come under the third angel's message as well. So we're from 7 BC, 976, paragraph 2 and paragraph 3, and we'll see what this test is. And the heading is called, Tested by the Image. And it says, The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. Probation does not close for the priests at midnight because they still have a work to do under the second temple cleansing. So if you're saying that probation closed directly at midnight, you're rejecting the second temple cleansing as well. So you're rejecting the work of the sanctuary. Um, continuing on, it says, The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast has, will be formed will be formed before probation closes for it for it is the for it is to be the great test for the people people of God by which their eternal destinies will be this will be decided so however you react to this test your destiny will be decided so that's why I have to go through this test first and then you will see if you have the mark the mark of the beast upon your forehead or the seal of God upon your forehead next paragraph it says, this is the test that the people of God must have before they are sealed. All, all who, excuse me, all who proved, all who proved their, proved their loyalty to God by observing his law and refusing to accept a spirit Sabbath will rank under the banner of the Lord God Jehovah and will receive the seal of the living God. Those who yield the truth of heavenly origin and accept the Sunday Sabbath will receive the mark of the beast. So, the image of the beast test starts under the third, because the third angel is the one that seals. And before there's a sealing, there has to be a test. So, the image... of the beast... And some will have the Sabbath, Sabbath as, as a seal, or have Sunday as the mark after this test. Because this is what God uses to see, to see what their eternal destiny will be. Um, now I'm reading from Great Controversy, page 605.2, GC 605, paragraph 2. It says, the Sabbath will be the great test of loyalty, for it is the point of truth especially controverted. When the final test shall be brought to bear upon men, then the line of distinction will be drawn between those who serve God and those who serve him, serve him not. So, so the test comes, then a line of distinction is shown between the true and the false. The wise and the foolish, the wheat and the tares. Continuing on. While the observance of the false Sabbath in compliance with the law of the state, contrary to the fourth commandment, will be an avowal, avowal of, of allegiance to a power that is in opposition to God. The keeping of the true Sabbath in, in obedience to God's law is an evidence of loyalty to the creator. While one class accepting by, while one class, by accepting the sign of submission to earthly powers, received the mark of the beast, the other, the other choosing the token of allegiance to divine authority, received the seal of God. So they received the seal of God once they overcome the beast and his image. That's what Revelation 13 teaches. That's what the pioneers teaches. That's, that's what Sister White teaches as well. So here's another thing that must happen before you're sealed. And if you're saying the image of the beast test is now during during the time period of 9-11, you must see the ladder ring falling out in full. Also, must see church and state combined 
to push forth religious intolerance, but we're going to get to that quote soon. Now, I'll read it from CCH 334.6. CCH 334.6. And she says, the Sabbath question is to be the issue in the great final conflict in which all the world will act apart. And if the image of the beast tests the great and final conflict, and the great and final conflict, some say is happening now during the time period of 9-11, why do we not see an issue with Sabbath and Sunday? Continue on, it says, Men have honored Satan's principles above, above the principles that rule in the heavens. They have accepted the spirit of Sabbath, which Satan, with, which Satan has exalted as a sign of his, his authority. So there's a sign, sign of authority with God, there's a sign of authority with Satan. When it's Sabbath, when it's Sunday, when it's a false Sabbath. But God has set his seal upon, upon his royal requirement. Each Sabbath institution bears the name of its author, an ineffaceable mark that shows the authority of each. It is our work to lead, it is our work to lead the people to understand this. We are to show them that is a vital that that it is a vital consequence whether they bear the mark of God's kingdom or the mark of the kingdom of rebellion. For they, for they acknowledge themselves subjects of the kingdom whose mark they bear. God has called us to uplift the standard of his downtrodden Sabbath. So like I stated previously, if the image of the beast test is happening now, you must see Sabbath being controverted, controverted by all. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say that it, it could never it could, the seal of God cannot be be in place upon anyone now as you're right in saying you have to see a, 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 a controversy over that issue not just in the movement but also in the in the state as well Amen. And she says um, in last day events no one has yet received the mark of the beast Sunday keeping is not yet the mark of the beast and will not be until the decree goes forth causing men to worship this idol Sabbath. The time will come when this day will be the test, but that time has not come yet. So that's last day of events 224. So because she says that time has not come yet, if you're saying that we're receiving the seal of the living God now, you would have to show in history where that time has come where we're now being forced or pressured mm -hmm. to keep the sabbath or or an issue even sort of circling it at this very moment that seal cannot be placed until that issue is actually the point controverted so amen until then that seal of the living god is not placed and we see that it's at midnight where we're going to have that issue amen and you said that's from last day events page 224 220, yeah, 224. Two, last day events 224 states that shows that Sister White is saying that the mark, the mark of the beast is not placed upon anyone's forehead because the Sabbath, Sabbath and Sunday is not a controversy. And it, you would have to see it both in the church and in the state because the church and the seals run parallel. So you have to see it in both. So continuing on, we're reading from Evangelism, page 233.3. .3. And the title for this. It says a distinct, a distinct people with a testing message. It says the Lord has been pleased to give his people the third angel's message as a testing message to bear to the world. John beholds a people distinct and separate from the world who refuse to worship the beast or his image who bear God's sign, keeping holy his Sabbath. The seventh, the seventh day to be kept holy as a memorial of the living God, the creator of heaven and earth, of, of, them, of them the apostle writes, here are they that keep the commandments of God and, have, and the faith of Jesus. And we know you keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus when you are fully clean from all your defects of character. And that is when divinity and humanity is combined. Um, also, so... Another thing you would have to see if the image of the beast test is now is a Sabbath Sunday issue. This is already stated, but just reiterating that. And every single one of these things that I'm going to write will have to happen. 
Not one should be missing, not two should be missing, only four is there, no, every single one have to be there to say that the image of the beast test is happening now. Now we'll read from GC, page 605, paragraph three. Great controversy, 605, paragraph three, and it says, heretofore those who presented the truth of the third angel's message have been off have often been regarded as mere alarmists. Their predictions that religious intolerance would gain control in the United States, that church and state would unite to persecute those who keep the commandments of God have been pronounced groundless and absurd. It has been confidently declared that this land could never become other than what it has been, the defender of religious freedom. But as the question of enforcing Sunday observance is widely agitated. The event so long doubted and disbelieved is seen to be approaching, and the third message will produce an effect which it could not have had before. So, she's showing that under the third angel's message for whatever class, you would see these attributes. You would see religious, Intolerance, and you would also see persecution for keeping Sabbath. I'm just going to write persecution. Persecution by church and state. Continuing on. From early writings, page 254, paragraph 2. It says, after Jesus opened the door of the most holy, the light of the Sabbath was seen. So the light of the Sabbath comes when the door of the most holy place is opened. And the people of God were tested as the children of Israel, Israel were tested anciently to see if they would keep God's law. I saw the third angel pointing upward, showing the disappointed ones the way to the holiest of the heavenly sanctuary. I'm skipping over to now to the last sentence now. And it says, the third angel has lighted up the past, the present, and the future, and they know that God has indeed led them by his mysterious providence. So, you must have knowledge that the most holy place is fully opened for that class. And we already know that the most holy place is opened on the Day of Atonement. And the Day of Atonement is not... <clears throat> not during the daily work it is the yearly work It's the special work and we know that god's people by faith look into the most holy place within with when they receive their mare vision and we know that the most holy place is under the third message Now, I'm going back one paragraph. Early writings 254, paragraph 1. Had your hand? Okay. Early writings, page 254, paragraph 1. It says, as, as the ministration of Jesus closed in the holy place, and he passed into the holiest, and stood before the ark containing the law of God, he sent another mighty angel with a third message to the world. A parchment was placed in the angel's hand, and as he descended to the earth in power and majesty, he proclaimed a fearful warning with the most terrible threatening ever born to man. And that warning is to not worship the beast and his image. This message was this message was designed this message was designed to put the children of Israel upon their guard by showing them the hour of temptation. The first angel message is the one that first warns you about the hour of temptation. Fear God, give him glory for the hour of judgment is come. That hour of judgment is the same hour of temptation. So the first angel message is the one telling you to look out for what's happening, what's, what's going to come here under the third Go ahead. I was just gonna say, so that means the third cannot say a word 
until the crisis of Sabbath and Sunday becomes an issue. Not until it, it, it's made void in the land Amen. and it's made void in the church. He cannot speak till that time. Amen. So for those to say that the third angel has arrived, they're actually saying that the law of God has been made void in, in the United States, been made void in, in the church, and this none of us have seen. Because according to the quote you just read, she says, as soon as it was, as soon as it was open, what light was, was shown? Sabbath. Sabbath. Because it's a controversy. Mm -hmm. it's, this, is the point of, this is the point of agitation. So he now has to speak <laughs> and give a warning to mm -hmm. men of the consequences of what will happen if they don't keep the Sabbath and if they accept Sunday. So this is why the seal of God can't be placed mm -hmm. until it's a controversy. Because the whole purpose of the seal is to protect you from his wrath. That's the whole purpose of the seal. He can't pour out his wrath in involuntary time because it's Amen. not a controversy. You can freely accept <laughs> and you can freely reject. But at that time, there is no free, you're forced to do something that's against your conscience. That makes sense because in Revelation 14, 9, the third angel says what? If any man worship the beast and his image, those are his first, that's his first message. If, that's yeah, his showing message. that. If any man worships the beast and his image, he's not coming for any other message Amen. at the time of the worshiping of the image. Amen. And even if you look on the charts, the charts are our foundation. And the, if you look on the 850 chart, the, the 850 chart shows clearly that under the third message, and it, it shows directly a line going across what it should be under the third angel's message. Under the third angel, you see the most holy place opened, Amen. and the image of the beast directly there. So if you're saying that now, you're, you're fighting the charts itself as well. And going off of what Swinon has said, I think, or Canars has said that, when, when, when you're sealed, that's when, when the judgments come. And then right under here, it shows you the, the plagues, the judgment coming after the seal. So the charts themselves show you the truth as it should be. Amen. Amen. All right. Go make one point. You could even notice on the charts the three steps. Amen. Look at the courtyard and the holy place, and then you come up to the third and the most holy place with the the, the warning, the trumpet blowing mm -hmm. to the right, to the image, to the image that is now set up, mm -hmm. and Christ yep. completed His work in His most holy place, and the third angel, which is the messengers, proclaiming this message during the time of the image crisis. So you even see the three step. Um, of, what I, of what I'm pointing out from 9-11 to midnight you have one and two the work of the courtyard and the holy place and then at midnight the work of the most, most holy place at the same time as the image crisis amen. that's when the third speaks amen oh amen oh, and it's the trumpets and we know the trumpets always go against Rome anyway as well yeah, so that horn from all the way to that Roman amen amen um I'm continuing where I left off. It says, This message was designed to put the children of God upon their guard by showing them the hour, showing them the hour of temptation and anguish that was before them. Said the angel, they will be brought into close combat with the beast and his image. Their only, their only hope, hope of eternal, eternal life is to remain steadfast. Although their lives are at stake, they must hold fast to truth. The third angel closes his message thus. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So they go through a conflict with the, with the, with the beast and his image. So there must be a conflict between God's people, between um, God's people and the beast. Um, something else I wanted to point out. Oh yeah, they go through this conflict, and then, and then the angel pronounces. The third angel pronounces when they have the seal after they have succeeded to overcome this conflict. It says, "Here are." I want to say it verbatim. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, because the Lord knows that they will keep the commandments of God. They will keep his commandments and have the patience of, of the saints because they have overcome the last final test. 
Continuing on, it says, As he repeated these words, he pointed to the heavenly sanctuary. The minds of all who embrace this message are directed to the most holy place, where Jesus stands before the ark, making his final intercession for all those for whom mercy still lingers and for those who have ignorantly, ig ignorantly excuse me, broken the law of God. This atonement is made, made for the righteous dead as well as as for the righteous living, it includes all who have died trusting in Christ, but who, not having received the light upon God's commandment, had sinned ignorantly in transgressing, in transgressing its precepts. So, when this goes forward, and when, when with the message saying that here, here are they that, that keep the commandments of God and have the patience of the saints, the Lord will give the wise a message to to um, preach and that message is how how the world will know that they keep the commandments of God and have the patience of the Saints and this message will lead others to turn away from their ignorance and turn away from transgressing God's precepts to um, embrace them and uplift them so this is when this is when the wise priest will give a message and that message will bring in the Levites where, where now the Levites will have their first and second test. So now coming down to the closing. And now we're going to see who makes the image first. It says, this is from 1T577.2. 1T577.2. It says, that night, I dreamed that I was in Battle Creek, looking out from the side glass at the door and saw a company marching up to the house, two and two. When I was writing this, when I was put, putting these, these together, these quotes together, I thought about they're marching up to the house, two and two. That made me think about the ark. And the only ones that went in the ark, two and two, were the unclean, the unclean animals. But continuing on. They looked stern and determined. And then she says, I knew them well. Continuing on, and turned to open the parlor door to receive them, but they thought I would, but, but thought I would look again. The scene was changed. The company now presented the appearance of a Catholic procession. So the people that Sister White saw in her dream were people that she knew well. But then when she looked again, these people changed into a Catholic procession. Continuing on, says, one bore in his hand a cross, another a reed. And as they approached... And as they approached, the one carrying a reed made a circle around the house saying three times, this house is prescribed. And these are the three times. This is the test because the people that she knew well were the ones that turned against her and joined with the state and now made an image of the papacy. And now they are a Catholic procession. And what that shows you is that they said three times. Mm-hmm. That's Babylon. The first Amen. Place, Amen. They, That's Rome. Rome. And this is Rome. Where, just as Swinton said, it could be the dragon, beast, the false prophet. And that, that's the, the threefold union of, um, of Rome. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, one, one bore in his hand a cross, another a reed. And as they approached the one carrying a reed, excuse me. And as they approached, the one carrying a reed made a circle around the house saying three times, this house is prescribed. The goods must be confiscated. They have spoken against our holy order. Terror seized me and I ran through the, through, through the house out of the north door and found myself in the midst of a company, some of whom I knew. But I dared, but I dared not speak a word to them for fear of being betrayed. I tried to seek, seek a retired spot where, where I might weep and pray without meeting eager, inquisitive eyes wherever I turned. I repeated fre frequently, if I could only understand this, if they will tell me what I have said or what I have done. So the ones that make the image of the beast first are the false priests, the ones that people that we know, the tears are the ones that make the image of the beast, people that we know. Um, <laughs> 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 
And same thing with Christ, the one that made the image was Judas, someone that he well knew, which was always around him. And, and the ones that we have always been around, unfortunately, there will be, they, they will be tears and they, they will be the ones that would make the image of the beast first. Jesus um, called Judas friend. Amen. Jesus, Jesus called Judas friend. Um, I'm going to read the next paragraph, but before I read that, I'm going to read this one sentence. The first sentence from Review and Herald, May 8th, 1888, paragraph 1. And it says, When the Redeemer of the world walked among men, many who identified themselves with him as his disciples afterward, afterward forsook him and became his bitterest enemies. So... The ones that have identified to be disciples of 9-11 will become the bitterest enemies. And that is not happening now where the ones that we have fellowshiped with are not bringing us up to the state. That is not happening now. Continuing on. She says, this is going back to 1T. I'm reading from 578, paragraph 1. She says, I wept and prayed much as I saw our goods confiscated. I tried to read sympathy or pity, pity for me in the looks of those around me and, and marked the countenances of several whom I thought would speak to me and comfort me if they, if they, if they did not fear, excuse me, if they did not fear that they would be observed by others. I made one attempt to escape from the crowd, but seeing that I was watched, I concealed my intentions. I commenced weeping aloud and saying, if they would only tell me what I have done or what I have said. So after the three times, um, after the three times saying that this house is prescribed and you're going against our holy order, then the loud cry comes um and she says if they would only tell me what i have done or what i have said and this is the same thing in christ's time when when they see that there was no fault and they say i find no fault so they have nothing really against you but they're doing it because of their wicked hearts last quote and this is the last thing that um we should be seeing This is from 7 BC, 976, paragraph 4. And the title of this is Apostasy and National Ruin. And, and she says, When the Protestant churches shall unite with the secular power to sustain a false religion for opposing which their, which their ancestors endured the fiercest persecution, when the state shall use its power to enforce the decrees and sustain the institutions of the church, then... Will Protestant America have formed an image to the papacy and there will be a national apostasy which will end only in national ruin. So we do not see at this time. National apostasy. And national ruin at, comes after the national apostasy um so sister white gives you a list of things that have to happen first and then she says then will protestant america have formed an image to the papacy and there will be national there will be a national apostasy which will end only in national ruin so in conclusion those that say that the image of the beast test is now during 9-11 and saying that the third angel is here for the priests at 9-11 is going against every single one of these points because all of these things have to happen for the third angel to even come not excuse me these things have to happen under the third angel and these are things that we are not seeing so we would have to see latter rain coming out in its fullness 
church and state being combined. Persecution for not keeping Sunday is a Sabbath Sunday issue. Religious intolerance, light upon the Sabbath, which is which is um, which is shown when the most holy place is opened up in full. A conflict with God's people versus the beast and its image. National apostasy, and then after the national apostasy is national ruin at midnight cry, where Islam attacks the United States for what they have done. So these are just a couple things that has to happen under the third angel's message and all of these things all, all of these things have to happen one can't be lacking two can be lacking we have to have every single specification for it for it to um for it to be true and these, these are only some there's many more if you go read through sis white's writings but i pray that this was clear and this shows that the third angel is not now Shall we pray? Loving Father in heaven, I'd like to thank you for all that you have done this, this day, Lord. I pray that you may forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. I pray that you may help us to be ready for, for when the great and final test, test comes upon, upon your people, that we may have, have, have that seal placed upon our foreheads. I pray that you may help us to uh, humble ourselves now so that at, at midnight we will humble ourselves even more, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.